speaker, may we, recognize, may we recognize the Honorable Carlos Zarate of Partilis Bayan Muna, who wishes to avail of the privilege hour. Representative Carlos Zarate is rec recognized for his privileged speech. Madam Speaker, my dear colleagues, good afternoon. Today, I rise on a personal and collective privilege to speak on a very important issue that has earned the ire of many human rights victims of the martial law regime. I am referring, Madam Speaker, to President Aquino's February 13 appointment of a former police general as chair of the Human Rights Victims Claims Board. Madam Speaker, the said appointment by President Aquino, to my mind, is an insensitive act and even a dishonor to the memory and sacrifices made by the victims of martial law. My dear colleagues, Madam Speaker, the martial law victims waited for nearly three decades after the late dictator was ousted before Republic Act No. 10368 or the Human Rights Reparations and Recognition Act was passed into law last year. They were made to wait again for another year before President Aquino finally constituted the Claims Board last February 13. However, other than it was an insult to the victims, Madam Speaker, the appointments of Police General Lina Castillo Sarmiento as chair of the board is, ho is also a highly questionable act. In Section 8 of RA 10368, the qualifications of the nine-member claims board are the following. A. He or she must be of known probity, competence, and integrity. Second, he or she must have a deep and thorough understanding and knowledge of human rights and involvement, and I am em emphasize this requirement, Madam Speaker, involvement in the efforts against human rights violations committed during the regime of former President Ferdinand Marcos. And C, he or she must be at least three uh, at least three of them must be members of the Philippine Bar who have been engaged in the practice of law for at least 10 years, and he must have a clear and adequate understanding and commitment to human rights protection, promotion, and advocacy. Indeed, we now ask, Madam Speaker, what really was the involvement of Director Sarmiento in preventing human rights violations during the martial law regime? President Aquino, therefore, cannot feign ignorance of the requirements of the very law that he signed last year. Yet, instead of appointing a head of the claims board, a victim or even a representative of the victims, President Aquino chose to give this rare distinction to a representative of the very institution, the Philippine Constabulary, the forerunner of the now Philippine National Police, that unleashed, along with the armed forces of the Philippines, the most brutal human rights violations during the Marcos dictatorship. Indeed, Madam Speaker, during the previous Arroyo administration, Director Sarmiento was one of its apologists as the former director of the PNP Human Rights Affairs Office. As head of the HRAO, she merely swept under the rug charges of human rights violations committed by PNP officers and personnel. She was also part of the denial machine that attempted to jeopardize the stench of the internationally condemned cases of extrajudicial killings and enforced disappearances under the Arroyo administration. And if I may cite just one case, Madam Speaker, the manner by which she handled the investigation involving the case of 32-year-old Renante Romagos, a farmer who had survived from his ordeal after he was forcibly abducted, tortured, held in captivity, repeatedly stabbed and left for dead last December 12, 2007 in Compostela Bali province in Mindanao. According to the Hong Kong-based Asian Human Rights Commission or AHRC, Director Sarmiento, as head of PNP HRAO or the Human Rights Office, dismissed calls for investigation on the Romagos case as she lamely but callously blamed instead the victim for his inability to identify his perpetrators. 
Again, we ask General Sarmiento, where were you and what did you do as head of the Human Rights Office during the height of the state of impunity involving cases of extrajudicial killings and enforced disappearances under the Arroyo administration? Last year, during the Armed Forces of the Philippines MNLF Sambuanga City Standoff, the only claim to fame of direct, uh, Director Sarmiento was her program of bringing in entertainers and comedians to entertain the affected residents in Zamboanga City. But she was very silent on the reported torture and other human rights violations committed against civilians and some suspected MNLF rebels. Yes, Madam Speaker, even until today, the very institution that Director Sarmiento represents is associated in many more serious cases of human rights violations. For example, just last month, several PNP personnel were exposed to have been involved in maintaining a torture chamber in Laguna. On the other hand, Madam Speaker, it is also appalling to note that after a year of dilly-dallying the appointment of the Claims Board, President Aquino even bypassed and disregarded nominees from the Samahan ng ex-detainees laban sa detention at arresto or CELDA, an organization of former political prisoners and victims of martial law. CELDA is one of the human rights organizations specifically recognized by the Republic Act 10368 to submit nominees to be appointed as members of the Claims Board. Madam Speaker, my dear colleagues, as we closely monitor the actions of this Aquilino, Aquino Claims Board, I challenge this chamber, which made possible the passage into law of RA 10368, not to allow President Aquino to further desecrate this law, even as we continue to fight for justice for the victims of martial law and for all, all the victims of human rights violations. Thank you, my dear colleagues. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Majority Floor Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we refer the privileged speech of the Honorable Zarate to the appropriate committee. Are there any objections? The Chair hears none. The privileged speech of Congressman Zarate is referred to the appropriate committee. Majority.